Hey, what's up y'all? Nick here with The Last Coat. We're gonna talk winter prep today. So we have a 2018 Subaru STI here. This vehicle was last seen by me about a year ago. We did a decontamination and a TLC2 coating to the exterior. It stays outside all its life, so it's relatively dirty right now. Um, I got some shots of it panning around so you can see how dirty it is. Um, but we're gonna get right after it here and show you guys how to actually winter prep your vehicle with The Last Coat products. So our first step is going to be grabbing iron off and we're going to clean the wheels. This is going to decontaminate and remove the iron deposits that are embedded in the wheel surface as well as in the caliper. So we're going to take this and apply it to a cool surface. We do not want the wheel hot or in the sun while we're doing this. Make sure we get it all into the uh, cracks and crevices of the wheel here. You can get inside the barrel of the wheel, all over the caliper. And then we let this dwell for two to five minutes. We really don't want it drying on the surface, so if it's relatively warm outside, you can take a foam cannon or uh, some soapy water and kind of get it on there to keep it wet. Um, while it's wet, it's gonna be working. If it's drying up, it's not gonna be working for you, so just keep that in mind. Okay, iron off is now sat for its dwell time. We're now just gonna take a pressure washer or a hose with uh, good water pressure, and we're gonna rinse the wheel. We're now gonna do our pre-rinse portion. So now we're gonna take the last soap in our foam cannon, connect it to our pressure washer, and we're gonna be again foaming the exterior of the vehicle. Okay, so we have our buckets full. We are using three to four ounces to about two gallons of water in each bucket. One bucket is for our wheels, tires, wheel wells, and exhaust area. Our other bucket is gonna be used solely for the body of the vehicle, so for glass and paint. Our glass and paint bucket, we do not wanna be touching the wheels with. We don't wanna get any type of contaminants that could actually scratch our paint or do anything damage-wise to the paint. We're also gonna be using our foam cannon. We have the foam cannon full of three to four ounces of soap from the last soap and then we top it back off with water until the foam cannon is full. If you don't have a foam cannon, you still use the two bucket wash method here. You will just hand wash the vehicle as a traditional wash bucket method. So once I foam cannon the vehicle, I like to do the wheels first, then I go to the body of the vehicle. If there's bird droppings or bee droppings or just dirt in general in the vehicle, the longer the soap sits on there, the better it breaks down everything and uh, will allow you to do less work to remove everything from the surface. So start with the wheels. If you have a wheel brush like this, um, much easier to get inside the barrels and to get into these tiny nooks and crannies. We are still gonna use a microfiber wash mitt to actually wash the wheel, but we will start with this here. So now we're going to take our wash bucket for the body of the car and we're going to scrub the entire exterior except for like I said our wheel bucket is only for the uh, wheels and uh, wheel wells. Our body bucket is going to be only for the top side of the car and the sides of the vehicle. All right, now that we got the exterior washed, we're gonna do a rinse on it.
Okay, next step, we're gonna take two to four ounces of the last soap. We're gonna put it into our wash bucket here. We've already cleaned the wash bucket out, so we're not using the water that we had when we did the wash on the exterior. So we're gonna put fresh water in here, one to two gallons, and we're gonna take our bare slate clay mitt and we're gonna clay the exterior of the vehicle. We're gonna remove the contamination that's embedded into the paint surface. The reason we do this is so that the sealant can bond fully to the actual paint surface without anything in between it, between the paint and the sealants. Okay, so we're gonna take our bare slate clay mitt. We're gonna dunk it into our bucket of the last soap here. If your clay mitt also starts getting hot or you've left it in the sun, you can cool it back down by putting it in cold water or sticking it in the fridge or something like that to actually get the clay back to a normal state. Just, uh, just a word of advice there. So now that we got that, we're just gonna get some soap here on the surface. We're using the microfiber side to put soap on the surface. If you prefer, you can still take a wash mitt, put even more soap on the surface. You wanna have plenty of lubrication on the paint surface while you're doing this. Then you're gonna take the clay side and we're just gonna lay it right onto the paint here and we're gonna work right across it. We don't need to put a lot of pressure down, just enough to hold the uh, clay mitt to the surface. And we're gonna kinda of do hashtagging patterns or if you want, you can do circular patterns. It really doesn't matter as long as you get full coverage across the surface that you're clay barring. Another thing I wanna mention, when you come up to an area like this where you have a body line, one's higher and one's lower, don't be digging at this a bunch and just trying to go at it. Just make light passes across it. You don't need to be digging down. So again, very simple. We're gonna repeat this process across the whole entire vehicle. And then once we do that, we are gonna rinse everything off. <laughs> Once we have everything rinsed off, we will then go into drying the vehicle. Okay, now that we have the entire vehicle washed, clayed, and rinsed, it is time to dry it. So grab your favorite drying towel. I'm using a microfiber drying towel right now. And the easiest way to dry your car is to just pull the microfiber in one direction. Avoid making swirling motions or anything like that. You're just smearing the water around effectively. So it's just easier to lay it down and just pull it one direction. And when you get down to a bumper area, still same type of effect, just try to pull the water and the microfiber in one direction rather than going around and around. You'll just keep putting the water back in the same spot. So we just do this around the entire car, get everything nice and dry. When we go to do the wheels, we're actually gonna take a small microfiber towel and we will hand dry the wheels as well. If you have a leaf blower, you can also use a leaf blower. Um, but if you don't, you're gonna be using a drying towel like you see me doing here. Okay, now we have our entire vehicle dry. We're going to apply our paint sealant, which is gonna be TLC2. You could use black ice as well, but for this tutorial, we're gonna use TLC2. First, to prep the surface, we need to apply an isopropyl alcohol wipe or IPA. You can also use a prep spray as well to do this, but for this, we're gonna use an IPA. We're gonna spray it across the surface, wipe it down, and then we will apply TLC2. So it's pretty simple. I have a 50% mixture of isopropyl alcohol mixed in here. We're just gonna spray it right onto the surface. Now we're gonna take a dry microfiber and literally just lightly wipe across the surface to remove any type of residues, oils, or just anything that would stop the bonding of TLC2 to the surface. Now that we've done that, we are literally ready to spray TLC2. I'm also using our microfiber towels. They are 400 GSM, so nice and soft. They will not scratch a vehicle. So I'm gonna shake up my TLC2 really well. And I'm gonna spray right onto the microfiber towel. Now we are just going to wipe it right across the surface here. You can do a hashtagging effect or you can do circular motions. It's really up to you. Want to get it down into the pores of the paint and then flip to your dry side and buff it off to a high gloss shine. 
Now you're gonna do this to the entire vehicle. So don't forget, you need to do your IPA wipe to your entire panel and to the entire vehicle. Once we've done this, now we're gonna actually go into the uh, glass cleaning portion. And I'm going to use AMP. This is our final detailer. And we're going to dilute it 15 parts water, one part AMP. So that's in a 16 ounce bottle, that is 15 ounces of water, one ounce of AMP in here. And we're gonna use this as our dedicated glass cleaner. So very simple. We just spray it right onto the surface. And when cleaning glass, I like to do vertical motions followed by a horizontal wipe. Do not do circular motions here. That will just streak the glass. So now that we have gone vertical for first and then horizontal in the second, I'm going to switch to the dry side. And now I'm gonna go vertical again. I'm gonna go against the lines that I put through the glass with the cleaning product here. So that will actually buff them off. And that gives us a nice high gloss shine on our glass as well as there'll be some hydrophobic properties from the amp on the glass as well to help water and uh, dirt and debris and stuff in the winter come off of the glass. So that's basically it. And if you wanna also do your wheels, same type of thing we did with the paint. Do an IPA wipe on the wheel and then apply TLC2 or black ice, whatever you want on there. Then the last thing to do, or at least the last thing that I always like to do, is then shine my tires after I've done everything else on the entire vehicle. So I like these foam applicators, especially for low profile tires. And we're just gonna work our favorite tire shine right into the uh, rubber surface here. And then if you want to ensure that you don't fling any tire shine once you go to drive, I always will take a uh, microfiber or a uh, shop rag and I will buff the excess tire shine off of the surface after it's been sitting for a few minutes and penetrated the rubber. So now that you have your vehicle fully protected, there's a few other things you want to keep in mind when you're approaching winter. You want to make sure your vehicle has an oil change. You want to make sure that your windshield wiper blades are in good shape. You want to make sure that your windshield wiper fluid is full. In case you get anything on your window, you can always clean it off so you can actually see. If you're in a snow area, you want to make sure you have snow chains in your trunk. You want to have a blanket, you want to have some food, and you want to have some water in case you get stuck somewhere. Um, those are pretty much the most basic things that you can do as well as checking your tires. Make sure that you have good tread and good air pressure in your tires as well. Other than that, that's pretty much all you need to do to get yourself through winter. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.